Hello and welcome to another episode of You Ask, We Answer. I'm your host, Mark Jelinek, and in this week's episode, we're going to, to pick up on the topic of green screens. Now, last time we explored, let me get rid of the logo here, of how this piece of fabric helps broadcast meteorologists in their attempt to give you useful and informative weather information. Now, as we also explored, the benefit of a screen like this is it can put me somewhere like, let's say I want to visit uh, a glacier in southern Chile. Hmm. Or maybe I want to go to the Great Wall of China. You know, or maybe it's Machu Picchu. I know I've always wanted to go to Machu Picchu. Well, clearly I've actually been to these places or I wouldn't be able to put these pictures up there behind me. But there are times, as you even saw in the pictures, that sometimes a little of that green can come through. Now, as I said, that can make this fabric sometimes a little bit more of a, well, let's call it a prankster. Now, sometimes meteorologists know this in advance. We're going to take a look here first at a little clip from my friend and meteorologist, Chris Holcomb, at Atlanta's uh, 11 Alive News, WXIA, and show how in a recent St. Patty's Day episode, he took advantage of the green screen to do a little fun in his weather forecast. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers, and here we are, it is St. Patrick's Day, and look at me, I'm not wearing green. Well, there is a reason why I'm not wearing green, because when we do the weather, as many people know, we're standing in front of a green screen. So, this is how you would normally see me, standing here in front of the green screen with no green on. We're standing here, and I reference the maps and talk about the wisometer and the highs and the lows, but look what happens when I do this. If I was wearing green today, this is what would happen. Let me wrap up in my cape right here, put this on, and now I step in front of the green screen, and all you see is a floating head with me and the wisometer. So this is why we don't wear green on St. Patrick's Day. In fact, we could even go to a weatherman without any legs, too. So I guess I just have to deal with the fact that on St. Patrick's Day, I'll just get a lot of pinches. So as you saw in Chris's clip there, you can have a lot of fun with green screen, actually. And that's when you know about it in advance and what it might do to you. Now, we're going to try a little experiment here. And as you can see, I've changed. Put a little more green on, green hat, green shirt, a tie with some floral patterns that have different shades of green in it. And in honor of the upcoming Masters Tournament here uh, in the Georgia area, I have as well this uh, shirt. So I've got a variety of greens here. And what I want you to do now is I want you to imagine which of these greens are going to disappear when I go and work with the editing equipment and get rid of the green screen. Um, is it going to be all of them? Or are they all so different from the color of the green screen behind me? Because as you can see, none of them actually fit the hue. It's a very sharp green. It's a very almost kind of a neon green. And let's go. Let's go have some fun and explore what happens. So let's take a still image from that last segment. And as you can see here, we still have the green screen in the background, but let's start taking some of the color out, some of that green. Now, interesting, you'll notice that the items that seem most affected are the hat and the master shirt. However, the hat's more of just tones. It's gotten picked up by the dark tone. Whereas the green shirt, well, that really seems to be the culprit. But what part of the shirt? Voila, it was really only half that becomes almost transparent. Now, this part of it wasn't so much because that green shirt was exactly alike, but the coloring or that pigment was likely used in making that lighter shade of green in the shirt. So this starts to give you some sense of how important not only the particular color, but nuances of that color are to being keyed out when this bright green color seems to disappear. Now for men's fashions, you know, most people to try to sell to us pretty simple colors. Uh, but for women's fashions, you know, a lot of times you'll hear descriptive colors more often, like robin's egg blue or seafoam green or different things like this. And at first glance, they don't seem like the bright green screen type colors. But let's go over a couple of cases where uh, meteorologists have 
come to find out that sometimes uh, what they think they're wearing doesn't so much cooperate with the green screen. So we're joined again by Christina Edwards of WHNT over in Huntsville, Alabama. Now this image was when she was doing some fill-in work for a station over in Georgia. And you can see the city of Waynesboro decided that it wanted to be represented on her torso. And again, it's not like she went and put on a, a green screen shirt. But let's take a look at the shirt she was wearing both before when this incident happened and fortunately her change. And when you look at them side by side, you can see that this sort of robin's egg blue or whatever at first glance, you wouldn't think, hmm, that's, that's not likely to be a problem. But it's not dissimilar, you see, in some ways to the tones of that master shirt I had. And unfortunately, the range of the green screen, you got to keep in mind that it's not always the precise color, but the equipment's got to be set up to handle some variances in maybe shading or lighting around that central spectrum and that's where you run into these problems quite often so shirt on the left or blouse on the left problem the one on the right not a problem although in a blue screen environment it may have been now in this next video clip courtesy of Liberty Chan at KTLA out in Los Angeles, California. We'll see a case that's made the rounds on the internet over the last month or so where her seafoam green dress didn't quite work out with a green screen and how uh, a kind anchor person behind the desk lent her a suit coat that certainly wasn't going to have a problem. So let's take a look. In the 30s in the high desert. Oh, I'm going to have to change. Look at this. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh where's no. The, where's the green? That's a bummer. I thought it was light enough. Do we have another camera? Like, can I show? Can we turn this one around? So, yeah, this oh, is yeah. what happened. Oh. <laughs> Dress by Chris Burrows. Oh my God, it's like a, it's swimming. It's, like it's a intense. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this brief exploration into green screen technology over the past couple of episodes and how it can have a little bit of, let's say, a prankster nature to it. Now, next time we head outdoors, we're going to be looking at personal weather stations and the proper way to site them on your property. Now, how do you get hold of us? As always, you can find us at the website, whatisitabouttheweather.com. There you will find additional information about the program, the vidcast and the podcast series, and how you can support the efforts we're doing. You can also follow me, Mark underscore Jelinek, at Twitter or Instagram. The uppercase M and J correspond to the Twitter account. The all lowercase is for Instagram. And if you're interested, you can certainly connect with me professionally on LinkedIn as well. So until next time, have good and exciting weather.